I would like to um, give the floor to President Pack. I'm not going to do that without uh, expressing my sincere thanks to you for your willingness to join this morning and to address uh, the, should I say audience? Is that the right term when you do a virtual event? I'm just going to use the word audience this morning. Many thanks, President Pack. Thank you, uh, Professor Prels. Good morning. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome you all to this online meeting. Uh, since 2007, the Summer Academy of uh, International Foundation for the Law of the Sea has been held at the premises of International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea in Hamburg. We have become accustomed to welcoming a group of enthusiastic young people to the tribunal each summer and look forward to exploring the law of sea with next generation uh, in this field. Unfortunately, as a result of measures in place related to COVID-19 pandemic, it was not possible to hold Summer Academy here in Hamburg this year. However, I'm pleased that this virtual event has been organized and that we have the opportunity to exchange views on current issues in the law of the sea and to strengthen the network of the alumni of Summer Academy. As you may know, ITLOS as a judicial institution created by the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea has dual functions. First and foremost, to settle dispute concerning the interpretation or application of the convention and other international agreement. And second, in so doing, to clarify and develop the law of the sea and international law in general. I guess the second function may have some relevance to the today's topic. The COVID-19 pandemic has posed serious challenge to the tribunal in performing these dual functions. Therefore, this morning, I wish to take this opportunity to make some brief remark on how the tribunal has coped with this challenge. The first impact of the pandemic was felt in relation to the previous 49th administrative session of the tribunal. As you may know, each year, Tribunal holds two sessions devoted to legal and judicial, as well as organizational and administrative issues. The 49th session, which took place in the middle of March this year, was shortened in light of the pandemic. During the session, many states began to close their borders and it became difficult for some colleagues to return their home countries. As the spread of the virus progressed and the situation became increasingly serious in Germany and elsewhere in the world, it was decided to restrict the number of staff working at the premises of the tribunal. From 23rd March until 18th May, the majority of the staff of the registry worked remotely, while some staff members remained present at the premises in order to ensure essential functions. During this time, the registry coordinate its work through tele and video conference. Most staff members have now returned to the work at the premises while a health and safety protocol is in place to prevent the spread of the virus. Visits to the premises remain restricted until further notice. For its judicial work, the tribunal currently has two pending cases on its docket. The dispute concerning delimitation of maritime boundary between Mauritius and Maldives in the Indian Ocean and empty San Padre Pio case between Switzerland and Nigeria. In the latter, we are currently in written phase and memorial of the applicant has been submitted in accordance with time limits fixed 
and the COVID-19 pandemic has not had any impact on proceedings to this date. In contrast, the pandemic has an impact on proceedings in the dispute concerning delimitation of maritime boundary between Mauritius and Maldives in the Indian Ocean. This dispute was submitted to a special chamber of the tribunal composed of nine judges by special agreement of the parties. On 18th December last year, Maldives filed written preliminary objections to the jurisdiction of the special chamber and the admissibility of Mauritius claims. In my capacity as president of special chamber, I had held consultation with the representatives of the parties on 4th February this year to ascertain their views with regard to question of procedure in respect of the preliminary objection. During this consultation, the parties agreed that the hearing should take place from 24th to 27 June 2020. However, in light of the uh, COVID-19 situation and the containment measures, including entry and travel restriction taken around the world, it was not considered realistic to hold hearing on the days previously agreed. During further consultation, the parties agreed that the hearing should be postponed to the week of 12th October 2020. While the postponement of hearing was made, hoping that it would take place with the physical presence of all participants in Hamburg, the pandemic situation is still quite uncertain and it remains quite likely that travel and other restriction might prevent some of the participants from taking part in the hearing in person. The special chamber is therefore currently in the process of exploring options for remote participation in hearings. The possibility of holding virtual hearing or so-called hybrid hearings in which some participants take part in, in person and others remotely raises several interesting legal and other questions. One of those issues concern the question whether under the current rules of the tribunal, a virtual or hybrid hearing can be held. The hearing is an essential part of the proceedings before the tribunal. Pursuant to Article 44, Paragraph 3 of the rules, the oral proceeding shall consist of the hearing by the tribunal of agents, counsel, advocates, witness, and experts. There are several provisions on the conduct of hearings in the rules. However, neither the statute nor the rules explicitly address the question whether a hearing can be held through video conference. Clearly, at the time of drafting the rules, virtual hearings were not foreseen as the technology to allow for remote participation was not widely available at that time. However, this does not necessarily mean that the rules exclude such possibility. You may know that International Court of Justice recently amended its rules to provide explicitly for a hearing entirely or in part by video link. The tribunal will also consider in the near future whether it is necessary to make similar amendments to its rules. In any case, I'm convinced that the principal function of the hearing, namely to provide an opportunity for direct confrontation of the parties in an open court can also be fulfilled without the physical presence of all actors. The key aspect is the direct exchange of arguments between the parties. With the help of modern video conference technology, this seems to be possible in a virtual or partially virtual courtroom. Pursuant to Article 26, Paragraph 2 of the Statute and Article 74 of the Rules, 
hearing before the tribunal are in principle open to the public. Public access is fundamental feature of proceedings before standing international courts and tribunals and has been referred to in legal literature as one of the features distinguishing judicial settlement from settlement through arbitration. The pandemic may make it necessary to restrict physical access to the courtroom. In such an event, public access to virtual hearing would be provided by live stream of the hearing available on the internet, or if a live stream was unavailable, a webcast. The holding of virtual hearing also raises some technical challenges. For example, all speeches and statements made and testimony given at the hearing in one of the official languages of the tribunal would need to be interpreted into other official language simultaneously. The tribunal must therefore identify and test software that allows for video conferencing with simultaneous interpretation. The location of relevant parties in different time zones around the world can also raise practical issues, as can the extent of lockdown restriction where the participants are based. However, I'm confident that these technical and practical issues can be overcome with creativity and that the tribunal will continue to operate effectively and discharge its responsibility despite wide-ranging restrictive measures taken around the world. The tribunal has already demonstrated its capacity to adapt to current circumstances in respect of a model agreement recently concluded with Singapore for the provision of facilities for the tribunal or a chamber of the tribunal to sit or otherwise exercise its function in Singapore. While previously the agreement would have been signed by representatives of both parties in person, on 5th June this year, the tribunal successfully organized a digital signing ceremony. The model agreement will form the basis of any future agreement to be signed by the tribunal and Singapore if it is decided in the future that a case submitted to the tribunal or a chamber of the tribunal is to be heard in Singapore. It is my hope that in future, further model agreements may be signed with states in other regions of the world so as to offer states parties increased flexibility and convenience in settlement of any dispute arising under the convention. COVID-19 restrictions are likely to bring about further innovation in the way the tribunal fulfills its mandates, allowing the tribunal to deal expeditiously with the case currently pending before it, as well as any new cases that may be submitted. Dear colleagues and dear participants, it remains for me to retreat the tribunal's appreciation to IFLOS for its work in strengthening the knowledge of the law of the sea and maritime law internationally, and in particular for organizing what I'm sure will be a most stimulating and informative event today. Thank you very much for your kind attention and stay safe and strong. Thank you.